we'll be hitting number 30, which doesn't seem like we've been doing this for that long, but um, we apparently have. And today um, we're going to have a presenter, Jen Doherty from USDA AMS, to talk about the USDA Harmonized and Harmonized Plus um, GAPS audits. But for now, I have everybody on mute um, just so that she can do her presentation. But you are welcome to, at any time, raise your hand to ask questions and we can stop. And we'll also ha have some time at the end of Jen's presentation for some discussions and um, additional questions. So if you feel like um, having your line unmuted, you can raise your hand or feel free to use the chat box and we'll try to get to all the chat box, uh, chat box questions during the call. As I said, it is being recorded and all of these always go up on the website after we're done with these meetings. So if you have to drop off the line or um, need to you know, come back to the meeting at another point, we do put the audio files as well as the notes and the PowerPoint presentations on our website. So look for those um, in a couple days after this meeting. So I think we'll just get straight into it um, with Jen's uh, presentation on USDA Harmonized and Harmonized Plus audits. And then we have just a quick couple updates um, from the PSA standpoint, um, mainly on the, the Water Summit. Um, but if there's anything additional that you guys wanna talk about at the end, we're, we're always open to um, having discussion because we host these calls for you to ask questions about um, produce safety. So with that, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Jen and have her uh, start the presentation. Great, thanks Gretchen. Is my audio coming through okay? Yep, you sound great. Terrific. Well, thank you for the opportunity to share some information about uh, the updates to our USDA Harmonized Gap Audit for 2018. Um, we're excited that the program's continuing to grow and uh, we're always looking to make this a tool that is very useful to growers. So do you wanna go ahead and advance the slide? So along the discussion of growth, I, I think um, I just wanted to take a minute to take a look at how the program has uh, evolved over time. In 2003, USDA started our voluntary audit program um, and that was our first full year of audits anyhow. And uh, we had 138 audits that first year. And in 2017, we had just under uh, 4,300 uh, audits that we provided services for. If you could advance to the next slide. As you can see over time, um, our audits have evolved from just the initial USDA gap and GIP to uh, include our commodity specific audits. And in 2011, we started our providing the harmonized audit service. That first year we conducted 50 audits and um, this past year we've grown to a little over 1300, uh, 1335. Um, and so our harmonized audit work is growing. Um, there's an increase in requests that makes up about 31% of all of our audit certification. Um, and we've revised our audit programs for this year uh, to meet the growing needs for growers. So I'd like to take a minute to take a look at those changes. So next slide, please. Okay, so in 2018, we are going to be offering two harmonized gap audits. Uh, the harmonized gap audit, which uh, we've been offering since 2011, and the harmonized gap plus. Both audits are going to be based on the harmonization initiative standards, and both audits have similar layouts and acceptance criteria. What's unique is that the harmonized gap plus audit um, is has some additional requirements. This is the audit that USDA is has submitted uh, for the Global Food Safety Initiative for their review for technical equivalence. Um, and we just recently submitted our application and that's going in the process of being reviewed. So this audit has additional requirements to be inclusive of the GFSI benchmarking requirements in guidance document version 7.1, part three. And we're looking for technical equivalents in the sections for B1, farming of plants, B2, farming of grains and pulses, and D, preprocessing handling of plant products. 
All right, next slide, please. All right, so the new materials that we're going to come out with are the USDA Harmonized GAP Plus Audit and uh, associated reference materials. What we're revising is the USDA Harmonized GAP Standard and Checklist. And I'm gonna take some time today to talk about the changes uh, for each of those materials. All right, next slide. All right, so first let's take some time to talk about the USDA Harmonized GAP Standard. What we've done is that the USDA uh, to take a look at the harmonized standards that we were currently using and we decided that this was going to be the year that we combined these standards into one standard um, and we published this new standard on January 5th so it's very new. Um, it is currently available on the USDA website and the standard will not be effective until May 1st 2018. So that means for any auditees that are using this audit standard or have requested the harmonized audit prior to May 1st, 2018, um, the previous version of this checklist can be used throughout the growing season for 2018 for all unannounced audits. Um, they're gonna be based on the same criteria as the initial audit for the year. So this standard was reorganized to combine the field operations and harvest and post-harvest operation standards. No changes have been made to the requirements of this standard, but it has been reorganized to increase audit efficiency for those operations who are growing and packing. Um, where both are being audited, there were a number of questions that overlap. So we decided to reorganize to try to uh, gain efficiency there. So let's go ahead and look at the next slide. So there are four scopes for the harmonized gap standard. It's broken down into four sections. The first is the general questions section. Um, each of those questions are gonna be designated with a G and this section is required for all audits. This section is including requirements on management responsibility, the food safety plan or risk assessment, uh, documentation and record keeping, worker education and training, sampling and testing, traceability, recall programs, corrective actions, um, and food safety incidents, self audits, and worker health and hygiene, and toilet and hand washing facilities, as well as waste management. The second section is our field operations section, or field operations and harvesting. Each of those requirements is going to be designated with an F at the beginning of the requirement. And this is the first scope that is optional. It's optional to choose either scope two, three, or four here. Um, scope four on logo use is only being used for operations who apply for and are using the USDA Gap and Gip logo. So in addition to general questions, an operation can choose field operations and harvesting or post-harvest. The field operations, um, is intended to be selected for those operations that grow and harvest produce. The third section, the post-harvest, um, these requirements are designated with a P and the scope should be selected for operations that pack and store produce. And the fourth section for the logo use is, is again only for those oddities who are applying for and are using the USDA Gap and Gift logo. Okay, next slide, please. So one of the major changes you're going to notice is with the layout of our standard. We have added columns to make this standard user-friendly to align with what USDA's acceptance criteria and documentation requirements are. So we've added the two columns for documentation and the man column for mandatory requirements. The mandatory requirement column indicates all questions that are applicable to the, op that if applicable to the operation must be answered as compliant. All right, now the documentation column has three different designations. A WP designation for written policy procedures and our plan. 
um, a records or an R designation for record and an assessment or a designation for risk assessment. So for the WP designation, um, a policy is a high level guidance that describes general goals and acceptable procedures for an organization. A procedure, we'd be specifically looking for a specified way to carry out an activity or process. And a plan outlines the actions that will be taken by an organization to mitigate risk. The policies, procedures, and plans may be communicated orally or in writing. They're only required to be in writing if a WP is indicated in the document column of the standard. All right, a record is a document stating results achieved or providing evidence of activities performed. And these may include the checklist, service records, billing forms, or water tests. The new designation that we've added for the risk assessment um, is something that we decided to expand our documentation requirements on so that it shows uh, that the, these may be documented in a number of ways. Um, and, and in a manner that best represents the operation and the type of risk assessment required. This may include a combination of written policies, records, uh, procedures, or uh, more information that's in the plan. All right, next slide, please. Okay, so our USDA Harmonized GAP Checklist is not yet published. It is going to be coming soon, any day now. Um, it, we are anticipating that it will be released this month to give everyone plenty of time to take a look at the audit tool and use this for a self-assessment for those who would like to use the Harmonized uh, Checklist for this year. It follows the USDA Harmonized Standard format uh, identically going through in the same exact order um, and it does have modified acceptance criteria. You'll, you'll see that uh, instead of listing out individual requirement numbers in the acceptance criteria section, that we have carried that mandatory requirement column um, throughout, that was throughout the standard, throughout the checklist as well, to make that more clear of what we're looking for. And again, this aligns with the same effective date as the standard of May 1st, 2018. Okay, next slide, please. Our new service offering for 2018 is the Harmonized Gap Plus Audit. Um, we are in the process of going through GFI technical equivalents for this audit. Um, and it's similar to the USDA Harmonized GAP audit, but with those additional requirements to align with the GFSI benchmarking criteria. The target implementation date for this audit is May 1st, 2018. So let's take a look at where the additional requirements have been added. If you could switch to the next slide. Great, thanks Gretchen. All right, so for the additional requirements, in the general questions requirements, some additional requirements have been added for organizational structure, food safety plan review, um, more detailed supplier requirements, storage of records, um, product identification and labeling, corrective action and food safety incident management, and these next two are completely new sections for food defense and food fraud. Now, you will notice that for those um, educators who have been working with auditees who have been using the global markets addendum portion of the harmonized audit, that a lot of these topic areas are very similar. And many of the questions that were in the global markets addendum are in these um, general question requirements. So they will be very similar, if not the same, uh, when you take a look at the specific requirements here. Okay, next slide. Okay, so the, uh, other additional requirements in the field operations and harvesting section 
We've added requirements for the risk assessment of each production area prior to harvest. Additional agricultural chemical and plant protection products requirements. Um, just to note, a lot of these are practices that have already been implemented throughout an op operation, but it's something that we now are including as part of the audit verification. Um, the other additional requirements is the maintenance and calibration of equipment and instruments that impact food safety and product re release procedures. Next slide, please. In the past harvest operations requirement, there were fewer uh, questions added. We added questions for uh, the risk assessment of the packing house itself, a HACCP plan only if critical control points were identified in the risk assessment, and uh, requirements for medical metal detection equipment if utilized. All right, next slide, please. All right, so and looking through the standard itself, um, you'll notice a lot of similarities here. We tried to make this fit in. Um, the new changes as, as easily as possible into the existing standards. So you'll see that it has the same layout as the harmonized gap standard, um, except for the additional questions that have been added have a letter after the designation. So for example, for question G12, there's an additional requirement A here. And the A at the end designates the additional question that it's unique to the harmonized gap plus. But the numbers will line up from the harmonized gap to the harmonized gap plus. So if you are working with growers who would like to gradually build up to uh, first achieving the harmonized gap audit certification and then working towards the harmonized gap plus, those, those numbers will still align. Um, and so I hope that's a user. Nope, it's going now. Okay. Uh, Jen, we had you on slide. Uh, I think you were right. You were on the A1 right here uh, where it said G1A. Hang on. There it is. All right. Okay. So if you can go to the slide below that, that would be great. Okay. There you go. How about that? Terrific. Um, and this is one of the, the sections I'm actually uh, most excited to talk about is, um, you know, with all these new changes, of course, there's a lot of adjustments to make. And um, we're, we're working on a number of tools to share to make the, any transition easier. Um, one of the things that we are working on getting out that should go out at the same time as the checklist is an equivalency matrix uh, which includes a summary of all the changes. So um, what this is going to include is a correlation of the original requirement numbers, so what was in the individualized standards, um, to the new requirement number to make that transition easier. So if folks don't have time to update materials before this season, they can see where it aligns. Um, and just a summary of the changes for each of the sections. Um, we have also made some efforts to uh, show where the alignment occurs with the um, produce safety rule. Uh, the other resource which will be out later in the year is the harmonized guidance manual. We have had a harmonized auditor manual and that has included examples of interpretation um, of the standard. Just, just to provide some additional context. Um, and we're looking to expand that to make that format available so that it's available to auditors and growers in a similar format. Um, and what we've also tried to include in the manual is references to useful information um, so that that can be a resource for growers of where to look for information. Next slide. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. So that's what I had to share. Um, as always, this is a, a tool that we want to make user friendly. So if you have an example or a question um, related to any of our USDA audit materials, please feel free to uh, contact me um, or our audit program because we would like to continue to make this a very user friendly tool and program. So at this point, uh, does anyone have any questions? All right, um, anybody have any questions? I am trying to get to the chat box to see if I can. Um. Hey, this is Donna Paul with Purdue Safety Alliance. I received a private question. For some reason, uh, Cal was not able to answer it or ask it publicly, but he was wondering um, if, so it looks like the harmonized gap is in alignment with FISMA. Can you speak a little bit about how it might suffice, you know, in, suffice in place of an inspection or how, what, what essentially that alignment means. There's been a couple of questions on that. Sure, so um, the prior safety regulation is a regulation, so an audit is not going to replace an inspection. Um, what we were looking to do when uh, I mentioned the alignment was to take a look at our requirements to make sure that there are uh, similar requirements in our audit that what would be looked for um, in the requirements of the produce safety regulation. So I think um, the other thing here, I think to say is that FDA did come out with um, an announcement uh, a, a while ago saying that they were still looking at whether or not they were going to take people's audits in consideration when they were trying to figure out which farms to visit, um, which isn't really a, a gen thing. Um, I also think many of the states, because of the CAP grants, are tasked with enforcement. So even if, if FDA said that, we're not sure what that would mean at the state level, and perhaps that's what's motivating this kind of question. Sure. And so, Again, what we're looking to ensure is that our requirements and our audit um, are at least equivalent to what is in a requirement for the produce safety regulation. Right. So I think it's good all the way around in the sense of the alignment will help growers not have to balance two things, even though they're still going to have to balance two things. Um, the, one of the questions growers ask us, because there's still, I believe, a lot of confusion about inspection versus audit. And, um, and because they're seeing them as the same, but audits are yearly, audits are voluntary. We don't know how often inspections are gonna be. They're certainly not voluntary. So I think as educators, we just need to keep answering those questions and trying to make it clear the difference between audits and inspections. And I think the deal is, is that sometimes when we use the words, people sometimes interchange them. And I think that's a difficult part for growers as well, as we have to be very clear about the words we're using. Hey, Betsy, this is Leanne. Am I unmuted? Yep, you are. Um, so um, since I work with FDA, and I don't know if any of our FDA colleagues are on the line or not, but let me kind of wrap that question up if, if I can take a stab at it. Um, so yeah, um, from the perspective of an audit, versus an inspection, just as Betsy and Jen have already stated. One is a regulatory activity, and the other is a voluntary activity. Farmers might not see it as a voluntary if they're being forced to do it by their buyers, but nonetheless, it still is a voluntary activity. One of the things that we stress with the auditing is that um, it's typically to help farmers uh, either gain or maintain their market access. Um, and I know Jen um, either went over or it's in the materials that an audit, as Betsy points out, is an is a annual activity as an ongoing um, verification that, that the farm continues to, to maintain their food safety program. Um, and then it's audited to, to be able to, to reflect that and provide feedback. Um, we, at USDA, we purposefully, since we are not a regulatory agency, we purposefully 
uh, built the audit program years and years ago so that it wasn't regulatory because we don't have that authority from Congress. FDA has that authority, but we don't. But we also knew we wanted to be helpful to the farming community so that they could demonstrate to their buyers that they were meeting, in this case, food safety practices. That's the primary reason we aligned the program. Um, prior to that, it was, as most of you know, it was linked very closely to FDA's guidance document. Now it is aligned to the actual regulation of the standard. Thanks, Betsy. Thanks for that clarification, Leanne. Um, are there, anybody else have a question? I'm, I'm looking in the chat box and I'm looking for people to raise their hands if anybody wants to be unmuted. I see two, uh, two, two questions from, from Cal. Can okay, can you read them, Dan? Because I don't see them in my chat okay. box. Okay, so um, if a grower passes the harmonized GAP Plus, will they be totally FISMA compliant when they show up for the inspection, or does it not cover all the FISMA requirements? So, great question. Um, the audit is going to be separate from an inspection, but we're looking to make sure that the same base information is verified. Um, so part of what we're looking at is to make sure that we do cover those areas that are mentioned in the produce safety regulation. But an and audit does not replace an inspection. Jen, this is Leanne. Let me, let me add a little bit too. Um, we, we use the term FISMA compliant quite quite frequently. Um, I think what the question actually asked is, are you compliant with the produce safety rule? FISMA is a whole lot bigger than produce safety, so we want to make sure that to the extent that we can help people understand that, then that, that's a good thing. Um, but to the extent that Jen answered the question spot on, the whole point of aligning the GAPS program was so that we would be able to help farmers demonstrate that they that they were awful darn close to meeting the, the produce rule um, and hopefully they can take that audit result audit report and should uh, fda federal or state colleagues um, visit their farm they'll have some tangible evidence to show that they're that they're meeting the requirements yeah and i, I think audit record keeping is usually uh, usually requires a lot more records than say what we're seeing in the FISMA requirements, but there's no way an auditor can tell you, an auditor's not an inspector. And I think that's what Leanne and Jen are trying to say is that even if the, even if the requirements are there, what they see the day they're there, of course is different. And an auditor, it's not an inspection. So, so they're, not, they're not the same thing. But in the, I guess one of his questions was, are all the areas covered? in the audit versus those that are in the rule? Are there any areas not covered in the audit that would be in the rule? That was, I think, one of the caveats of his question. I think that's right. Yeah, and I, Jen, you can correct me, but I believe we actually cover more than what's in the rule in the audits. Yeah, so we, uh, in some cases, uh, you know, the harmonized standard is based off of the GAPS guidance, but then also includes the industry-driven uh, requirements as well. Um, and what has been found to be the best practices by the industry. Um, so there are requirements that do, ha are, like are in addition to what is in the produce safety regulation. Um, example would be, um, some of our water testing is a little bit more extensive. Um, there are other requirements that are meeting, uh, if we, well, we meet or they're in addition to what is in the produce safety regulation. Yeah, and I mean, with the, P with the PSRs, the, for instance, the soil amendments section is, is reserved. And I think it's one of those things that we have to assume things will evolve as we continue to understand implementation. Correct, correct. And 
as that implementation comes, the alignment will continue. There's going to be additional guidance that's put out. And as that guidance is put out, we will continue to work to align our requirements with what's in the regulation. Right. Um, Don, you said there was another question in there. Uh, yeah, I did. These, um, and and I, for, I wanted to thank Leanne for pointing out that uh, FISMA doesn't is is more than just the product safety rule. We we didn't mean to mislead with that question. Um, Louisa Castro asked the question about whether there will be online training on the new standards to go alongside the uh, checklists, both the harmonized cap and the gap plus. So there will not be an online industry training that is provided through USDA for the new standards. Um, we don't provide training to the standards which we audit to, um, but certainly there is the ability to take this information and to incorporate it into trainings. I know um, there's a lot of great extension workshops and um, education sessions that are held which incorporate uh, how to implement a food safety plan and this would be a, a great incorporation into those materials. Okay Donna or Don you see any other questions? It seems like some people are getting some questions and some aren't. I don't see anything else. Oh. Your chat is back. Okay, Cal just told us we're all back. Oh, terrific. Any, anybody else have any other questions for Jen or? I have, but, oh, I was just gonna say, I have no other questions from my private stash that people were sending me. Okay. This has been like the, um, the uh, little gremlin in the machine day today. Um, so we appreciate you guys hanging with us and sending questions to uh, whoever you can get a hold of. And, and Betsy, this is Gretchen. I think I'm back. Hopefully. I apologize to everybody. I have Zoom just went crazy on me. It just booted <laughs> me out three times in a row. So. Oh, no. We're good. We covered you. Um, All right. Anybody, any questions for Jen? Um, any questions, Gretchen, you want to try and steal the screen back and go back to your um, your slide set since I just took it over and put Jen's up? It'd probably be, um, I sent you all of the slides, so that's not the slide deck that you're using, you're just using Jen's? Yeah, it was it was a little bit of a crisis, okay. so we just jumped right in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me, uh, let me go back to our... Um, original presentation. Back to your normally screen programming. <laughs> and thank you for the opportunity to share if anybody has any questions that they think of after the fact and uh, the changes to the gap audit, please feel free to reach out to me or the audit services branch. Yeah, I will, um, I will also go find the slides that Gretchen sent so that I can pop them open if she can't. Um, it, we can also take questions. Um, if there's any questions for the, the PSA, we're happy to take those. Let me grab, um, let me grab the slides. Betsy, are you seeing my screen now? Um, I see your screen, Gretchen. Yep. Okay, great. All right. Oh, that's me. Can everybody see those? Did we lose yeah. Gretchen again? Betsy, I'm the one that... Nope, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Go ahead then. Are we all done with questions for Jen's presentation then and um, discussion on the harmonized audits? Uh, yeah. There are two more questions in the chat box if you want to do those. Okay. okay. It's not letting me pull those up. So. Okay. I'll go, I'll go with those. I can see them. Um, if we have audit questions, should we contact audits or Jen directly? Sorry, I just mute it. Um, either one is fine. Okay. And our second question is, Jen mentioned a harmonized gaps manual with interpretations. 
Would this be helpful in developing FDA guidance, insights? Um, so uh, certainly we're going to continue to share information um, and the manual is going to be made publicly available and the examples that are going to be included are what we've used that can be understood in um, text from the calibration committee's training through the harmonized initiative. So, so the answer is they'll be made public and if FDA finds them of value, they'll be have access to them. And yes, and certainly we share uh, directly with FDA for all of our materials. Okay. Super, any other questions? All right, thank you, Jen. We'll keep you on the line in case there's any before we wrap up, is that all right? Sure thing, sounds great. Okay, next slide, there we go. Um, the Water Summit, uh, as you know, the Water Summit is coming up at the end of February, the 27th and 28th in Covington, Kentucky. As I like to say, balmy Covington, Covington Kentucky. Um, the registration filled very quickly and um, there is a waiting list and we are still, uh, we are still waiting through to make sure people confirm their participation and register. If they don't, we've been opening those seats to the waiting list. So. If anybody on the call is on the waiting list, don't lose hope quite yet um, because we're still working through that. Um, there will be remote site participation. We're encouraging people to work with their regional centers if you want to host a breakout group. Um, as you can see from um, the link that's on your screen, you can go to the Produce Safety Alliance website and check out the remote locations. If you want to participate, find a location near you and participate in a breakout group. That information will be fed into the meeting. So we have a person in Covington, Kentucky, who will be representing each of the regional groups and, um, and hopefully the tribal nations group. And they'll be able to feed information into the meeting and they'll be given a few minutes um, to present the breakout group's uh, input as well. Is there anything else? Uh, Don or anybody from the team wants to add to that, Gretchen, Donna, Kristen. Okay. Any questions about that I should ask? Do you want to add that there will be a uh, individual feed too if people just want to watch? They, they, they can join us through the individual feed. Thank you, Don. That is true. There will be an individual. We have, I believe, a thousand seats reserved um, for people that want to just stream it directly into the comfort of your own home or office, um, those will not be fed back into the meeting. So you can watch and, and follow along and listen to everything that's going on from the comfort of your own home, um, but, but there will not be a, a chance with that type of listening to feed information back into the meeting. Thank you, Don, for pointing that out. I have heard several individuals talk about hosting a, a quote unquote Super Bowl party type event where they're live streaming the event and you know you have popcorn and beverages of your choice. So that might be something that you consider now that the actual Super Bowl is over. <laughs> okay, I'll hold my comments on how sad you have to be to do that, but okay. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, any other comments on that or questions? Okay. Um, next, uh, the educators group call is looking like the tentative March 26th at 2 p.m. Um, if you have a topic you would like to have discussed, please contact Gretchen at glw53 at cornell.edu. Um, today we had, I, I was seeing upwards of 81, 82 people on the call, so Jen was uh, of quite a big interest. Um, those were great numbers to see, but if there's something else you want us to ask someone to present on, uh, just let us know and we'd love to chase that down. And yes, just to be clear, I see a comment. Um, the Water Summit will be done through a Zoom so that you can stream it. Any other questions? 
comments. Oh, there's a new one. Okay, so there was a question about uh, the remote locations in four regions. And again, the, the tribal nations will funnel their input into the Cincinnati meeting. Okay. Jen, I will ask you if you have any last minute. Oh, I should go to the next one, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Next slide there, Gretchen. As always, the Produce Safety Alliance website, um, like us on Facebook. Connie's been doing a great job uh, getting us a Twitter following. Um, if you have not joined the listserv, please join the listserv. I talked to somebody the other day who had not signed up, but they knew what we were doing, so somebody must have been sending it to them. Um, but if you haven't, please do join up. There's a lot of information about the Water Summit at the website, so just visit there if you have any questions. Um, Please do use the website, a lot of good information, a lot of good educational materials we've been updating um, under the resources tab as well as the trainer resources tab. Next slide. All right. Um, Jen, I'm gonna give you an option of any last words. Just thank you again for the opportunity to participate and um... Feel free to reach out if there are any additional questions or concerns. I think it was very interesting. I think for those of us that have doing have been working with growers to do farm food safety plan writing workshops using our template, as we all just noticed, we're going to have to go through and update that. <laughs> so, uh, so we put that on the to do list. And um, really appreciate uh, you being on, Jen. Um, as I said, there was a bunch of interest today. Um, Gretchen, Don, Kristen. Donna, any other thoughts that we need to share? I don't have anything to add. This is Gretchen. I apologize again for the technical issues and I'm hoping that didn't impact the recording, but we'll do our best. We'll get the slides up and at least the notes um, in case the recording didn't uh, pull through. But again, sorry about that. Let's just hope that doesn't happen during the water summit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so just one thought too, and if, if you are working on realigning educational materials, uh, I hope that you'll take a look at the summary of change document that should be out any day now. Um, I think that'll be a really great resource because we've, we've made the correlation to where things would be in current references to where they'll be in the new, the new version. So hopefully that'll help um, make that process faster. That is an excellent point. That is an excellent point. So the materials, including that change log, are not yet out, but they will be coming, and that change log will be very helpful. Is that correct? Yes, the summary of changes is what's not out, and the checklists aren't out, but the standards are up. Okay. So, any day now. <laughs> any day now. No, that, that's really helpful. We just had a discussion about it uh, this past week because there's obviously, an, it's winter for us, and we do a lot of farm food safety plan writing workshops this time of the year. Yeah, I think that'll, that'll be helpful um, versus having to go through and do the comparison all over again. We, we've put it in a table and that'll be out shortly. Super. Anything else? All right, as always, we really appreciate your guys' time. There's a lot of people on the call and a lot of, um, a lot of uh, effort and uh, time to commit to these things. So I appreciate everyone's time. Um, no worries, Gretchen. Uh, can't control technology. So uh, thanks to everybody on the team for sending out those little texts and making sure we converted over quickly. Um, with that, um, hope you all have a good afternoon. <laughs>